Hello everyone, welcome back to worship this week as we continue to worship via video as we're trying to halt the spread of this coronavirus. We're glad you're with us. We remember that even if we're at home and not here physically at the church, that this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Psalm 5. It's a Psalm that teaches us to pray to the Lord, to turn to our Lord and our God and our King in difficult times like King David did. In preparation for worship today, you'll need um, your Bible open to Psalm 5. There are some tools on the website you may find useful. The t uh, formatted text is available for you. A sermon worksheet is there. The order of worship is also there, along with a hard copy of the sermon if you want to download that. We're glad you're with us as we gather around the Word of God to grow in faith, to worship the Lord. God's blessings and your worship today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join together in confessing our sins. O Lord, our King and God, we are troubled and burdened by many things in this life. We fear and worry rather than trust in you and your promises to us. Please forgive our weak faith, our poor prayers, and our wavering trust in you. The good news is that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is from Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my sighing. 
Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. You are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men the Lord abhors. But I, by your great mercy, will come into your house. In reverence I will bow down towards your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their hearts are filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongue they speak deceit. Declare them guilty, O God. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Our second scripture reading is from Romans chapter 8, beginning at the 26th verse. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Our gospel reading for today is from Mark chapter 1, beginning at the 35th verse. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. We remember back to our own baptism as we confess the creed together. Do renounce the devil and all of his evil works and all of his wicked ways? I do renounce them. In whom do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Who do you talk to about your deepest concerns and your immediate needs? What do you do when you are discouraged or depressed or brokenhearted? When do you slow down and refocus your life? Where do you go when you need a safe place, either mentally or spiritually or emotionally? Why can't you find peace and hope and joy in the world around you? How do you deal with stress and worries and the problems that you face in your life? To all of these questions, Psalm 5 teaches us to turn to the Lord in prayer. King David turned to the Lord in prayer when he was facing discouragement and depression, when he was down in the dumps, as we might say today. The Psalms are prayers that you can use to express yourself to God. They are inspired prayers. They're prayers of real people facing real problems. Today, as we continue our Lenten journey, we're going to take a look at Psalm 5, and it will help us keep the good Lord in the center of our lives. Psalm 5 teaches us to handle discouragement and problems and pain and stress by using God's good gift of prayer. Take a look at Psalm 5 in your Bible or in the handout. We want to focus on verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 5. They say, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. This is King David's heartfelt prayer to God. When you think about prayer, remember that it's a gift of salvation that Christ has earned for you through his life, death, and resurrection. In prayer, God invites you to come before him because your sin has been atoned for. It's been covered over by the blood of Christ. It's no longer a barrier between you and God. It doesn't separate you from your Father in heaven. The blood of Christ has sanctified you. You are purified in his sight. You can now stand before God in heaven. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you are now welcome into God's presence. Prayer is a gift of salvation that Christ has earned for you through his life, death, and resurrection. Prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God. It's a way that God has given to you to, to thank him and to praise him. It's a way that God has given to you to, to disperse and diffuse the stress and the discouragement and the depression and the anxiety and the problems and the pain that comes into our lives. Notice that Psalm 5 addresses our Father in heaven as Lord, King, and God. These are words of faith. These are words of trust in the Lord. They are words that know that our King will use his mighty power on our behalf. They are words that believe that God, our Creator, cares about us, that he will help us, that he will watch over us. So in our prayers, Psalm 5 teaches us to address our Father in heaven as Lord and King and God. And we do th so through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Take another look at Psalm 5. This time, look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. The idea is that first thing each day, King David prayed to the Lord. 
The image behind the phrase, laying his requests before God, is that David has taken an inventory of all the things that are troubling him, all the problems and the pain and the stress, along with all the events that lie before him that day. And he is commending them all into the Lord's hands because he knows that the Lord cares about him and that he will help him. King David starts his day in prayer. What about you? How do you start your day? Do you start it with prayer? Each morning, do you take an inventory of, of what's going on in your life and commend it all into the Lord's hands? Do you take all the things that trouble you and worry you to your heavenly king? Do you ask your God and your creator to guide you and to lead you as you go about your daily activities? When is it that you pray? Do you start your day in prayer? Psalm 5 teaches us that you, when you begin each day in prayer, it focuses your life. It sets the tone for the day. It acknowledges God's place in your life. Prayer calms your heart and your mind and your spirit with the peace of God. Prayer brings a balance into your life. Prayer gives you a godly perspective on the events and the things that are happening in your life. Prayer gives you a certainty that you are not alone and that God's strength will be with you throughout the day. The New Testament teaches us the same thing. In fact, even Jesus began his day in prayer. In the Gospel of Mark, it says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. This idea of laying out your heart before the Lord each morning is captured in Martin Luther's morning prayer. It's recorded and it's, it's written in your small catechism, if you want to look it up. Luther's morning prayer goes like this. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. In this prayer, there is a line that said, For into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all things. That is exactly what King David teaches in Psalm 5. Whatever is on your heart, whatever is going on in your life, talk to the Lord about it in prayer. Ask him to guide you, to help you, to give you wisdom, to lead you through it. God invites you through Christ to come into his presence and to talk with him. That's what prayer is. Prayer deepens your confidence in God, his word, and his promises. Prayer brings the peace of God into your life. Psalm 5 reminds us that God wants us to pray, that prayer is a gift of salvation that Christ has earned for you through his life, death, and resurrection. You are forgiven. You are holy. You are righteous. You yourself can approach Lord, the Lord with confidence. You yourself can stand in the presence of God because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sin has been dealt with. Your guilt is no longer an issue. You can come directly before the Lord, your God. Your heavenly king invites you to come, 
to, to bring your problems, your, your pain, whatever it is that you're struggling with before him. And he promises that he will help and he will use his mighty power on your behalf. One way to think about prayer maybe is that the good Lord wants to hear your voice and he wants you to talk to him about your needs. And then after you talk about your needs and, and your um, life, you bring others' needs before them, before the Lord, as if they are your needs as well. Remember that the Lord is not looking for your eloquent prayer. He wants to hear your voice talking to him from your heart. Prayer is certainly a timely topic, isn't it? We are in virtual lockdown because of this coronavirus. We are bombarded by statistics that can spin us in circles and create a lot of fear. The world seems to be in near panic. Now is certainly the time to pray. Prayer brings peace to you, even in the midst of this coronavirus. The coronavirus is not greater than your Lord, your King, or your God. And so we take our concerns and our worries to him, our God who's created us, our King who protects us and defends us. Use this unique time in our lives to strengthen your prayer life. Bring your needs to the Lord. Trust that he cares about you. Depend on your king to use his mighty power on your behalf in your life. Now is certainly a time to pray. Finally, look at how Psalm 5 ends. Notice the words of comfort in verses 11 and 12. Verses 11 and 12 of Psalm 5 say, But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Prayer brings a balance to your life. It brings joy. It comforts your spirit so that you can rejoice in the Lord your God. In prayer, you have direct access to the Lord, the King, and your God. Prayer is a gift of salvation that Christ has earned for you through his life, death, and resurrection. May you find peace, and joy, and comfort, and balance in your life as you take your needs to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray. Lord, our King and our God, we thank you that you hear and answer our prayers. Send your Holy Spirit so that we can consistently pray to you and trust your promises each day. Grant us peace, comfort, and strength as we look to you for all things. Teach us to commend into your hands our body and soul and all things, knowing that you care and that you will help. Lord, our King and our God, we pray that you will end this coronavirus pandemic and restore our lives to peace and normalcy. We pray that you will comfort the families who are affected by this and that we here at Trinity may gather around those who are hurting and do what we can to help. Lord, our King and our God, we pray for our leaders. Give them wisdom to do the things that bring healing and order to our nation. Lord, our King and our God, we ask that you curb those who would do evil during this time. We pray that you will protect the weak and the vulnerable, and we implore you to send the good news of the Lord Jesus out into the world 
to bring hope to many people during these days. Lord, our King and our God, we pray these things in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, thank you for worshiping with us today. I pray that you were blessed and that, and that um, this has renewed you in your prayer life as you take your, your concerns, your cares, your joys to your Lord, your God, and your King. Just a reminder that the church staff is here. We are working. We are just a text, an email, or a phone call away. If you need something, we'd be glad to pray with you, visit with you. If you need supplies, if you need groceries, we can help you with that. Um, just give us a call. We are here and we care. So from all of us here at the church staff, we send our greetings to you and we can't wait until we can all be together again worshiping the Lord. God's blessings.